Welcome to the Barrow Mansion. Thank you for coming this evening. My name is Craig Zames. I'm a member of the Barrow Board. And uh, if you've not been here before, this is a wonderfully historic building that was built in the 1830s. And over the years, uh, the YMCA built on a gymnasium. This is the top half of what was the gymnasium. Uh, we have preservation grants, and we are in the process of restoring the building to its former glory. Uh, we are a 5013C, we're a nonprofit corporation, and the Barrow itself uh, produces different events during the year. This last year, we started the Salon Series, which we'll be resuming after the holidays. We have a wreath making event coming up on December 3rd, our third annual wreath making event. We had our second annual Dog Day After June event for dogs and their owners in June. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? And um, we're going to be having our annual, uh, once again, holiday party with the Van Wurst Park Association and the Barrow Mansion on December 10th. Um, we survive on grants and donations. And the building, as I am asked to say by the rest of the board, is rentable as far as weddings and all sorts of other things. So. Um, Beth Marshall, who is our communications director, is here this evening, and a font of information, and she'll be able to point you in the right direction. So, thank you, and enjoy the concert. Thanks, Craig. It's so nice to see all of you here. Uh, my name is Zach Christian. I'm the director of Convivo Music. I'm sure I recognize some of you. Um, we're a nonprofit in Jersey City that does uh, chamber music concerts throughout the year, about four or five events a year, and sometimes more. Um, this year, our big highlight was Chiltown Boogie, was a historical opera about Jersey City uh, that was planned to travel through five locations telling the story, the history of that spot. Of course, it rained. We wound up indoors doing that opera. Um, but we're really excited to um, be rounding out our concert season with Leo Gucci from Boston. Um, Leo is a fantastic cellist. He works with the MIT Symphony. And uh, our original founder of Convivo Music is Amelia Hollander Ames. Maybe she's watching. Hello. And uh, she has since then moved up to Massachusetts. And her and I were texting about doing a Baroque concert and then the scheduling got tricky. And she's like, you know what? Leo has this amazing program. He's just played it in Boston. Um, we should bring it down to Jersey City. And I looked at what he was working on and I said, of course, it sounds amazing. Um, so we're really happy to have him here today. I want to give a big thank you to Barrow Mansion. They've been a long time supporter of Comedy Room Music uh, for maybe 10 years, which is amazing. And also big thanks to Hudson County um, for a grant that we have that funds this year's concerts, and also um, Jersey City um, Arts and Cultural Trust Fund. Uh, there, uh, there's a new grant system this year in Jersey City that's amazing for the arts and um, helps provide a lot of what we're doing, um, so that's a big help. So, um, Leo has a video introduction of each piece, so you'll see me bouncing up here uh, before each piece to play a little bit of video um, from the composers so they can introduce their works. Um, and without further ado, I'd like to introduce Leo Gucci to our stage. Thanks, and uh, my, my chance to say thank, a few thank yous. Thank you to Zach and Convivo, and the excellent work that you do here in Jersey City, and thank you to the Barrow Mansion. Uh, really excited to be here and share this with you. This project is something I've been working on for, um, for uh, a long time now, longer than planned, thanks to the pandemic. But um, it's a chance to have a conversation about immigration and immigrants and what they bring to our country through their individual stories as, um, as told by themselves, but not through traditional storytelling, through music. So what you will hear tonight are eight very different pieces from eight very different people. Uh, and they'll have a chance to introduce their own work um, because of that, I, I ask uh, if we can just go through the entire concert with no applause. We'll just hold it until the end and um, make an evening of it. So, um, without further ado, thank you. Hello everyone, my name is 
Frank Duarte, I'm a composer, conductor, songwriter, writer, and poet from Michigan. I was born and raised in Southern California, and my parents were both born in Mexico. My mother is also an indigenous woman who is part of the Zapotec people, an indigenous group of the Americas whose native lands are located predominantly in Southern Mexico. My composition, which is in two movements, explores the dilemmas and hardships and joys and triumphs that many immigrants experience. While I am not an immigrant myself, I have fond memories of growing up um, and living in a house full of immigrants who, through their love, raised me and provided for me for many years. Through them, I learned what it meant to come from humble beginnings. And I am very thankful that I can live a life in this beautiful country, especially because of my courageous parents who came to this country with very little to their name. It is a very similar story that you will hear time and time again. I'm very thankful to work with Leo Eguchi on this beautiful and much needed project. I hope my composition allows you to reflect upon the many lives of the many immigrants that come to this beautiful country and that by perhaps reflecting, we can all forge a more understanding future together. Thank you.
Hello everyone, my name is Milan Lispi. I am a pianist, composer, and visual artist. The piece on the Quran is inspired by many events in Afghanistan, especially the current event that has happened during the past year. I have completed a crush within one and a half years, and in this piece, I wanted to show the beauty of our music, the roots, and also I wanted to connect it to anesthesia. As you can see, the sketches that are uh, it's inspired by many colors that I've seen uh, throughout the process of this piece. And uh, I wanted to also express uh, the struggle that refugees and immigrants are going through through this piece uh, by using different skills that I've experienced and played with myself. Hope you enjoy the piece and thank you very much.
Hello, I am Jose Luis Prado, Mexican born and American composer, and proudly part of the EU's very meaningful project in a comedy. In October 2001, Mario Lewandowski, one of the most important American composers of the second half of the 20th century, had been invited to a music festival in the University of the Little Town in the Gulf of Mexico, where I was doing my master's degree. He attended a couple of concerts where his music was performed, uh, gave also a couple of lectures, and met individually with many composition students. I was one of those students that met really with him. Trying to make the most of what I thought uh, it was going to be the only opportunity in my entire life that I would interact with a figure of such caliber, I played on the piano a couple of my most recent solo pieces. Um, but mostly, what I remember is that I uh, made him a lot of questions and tried to uh, listen carefully and absorb every single advice that he had for me. After Mario's return to the US, and uh, not too many weeks after that meeting, Mario calls me home to Mexico and asks me whether I wanted to come to Harvard to study with him on a full scholarship. That call changed not only the immediate plans that I had at that time, but it changed the course of my life completely. Mario not only invited me to come to his country, but he never forgot about me. He literally took me and my family under his wing. I married my Mexican girlfriend, who I met when she was 17 and I was 21, and we now have a 13-year-old beautiful boy who was born in Boston just a week after I graduated from Harvard. The person that I am today is a result of a combination of many experiences, of challenges solved, of a cultural clash. The artist is simply a reflection of that person. My music, therefore, is an extension of who I am. I'm not sure whether my music is Mexican or American or even more European. What I know is that it behaves exactly in the way I want it to behave and in the best way I can make it behave. Musically, my intention is to create kaleidoscopes of sounds, effervescent objects, always alive, always changing, with unique and unrepeatable gestures, full of energy and impenetrable density. The piece that I wrote for this project in particular has also the intention of generating melodic lines, at least more evident than in my previous music. Those lines signify my memories, my nostalgia for the people, the places, and the situations that I grew up with and that are now gone. And they're gone not because they don't exist anymore, but because I was removed from that world. And that's exactly what I think this project is very important. To me, music is not the main objective. It's just the content that we use to communicate, to be more sensitive to each other.
first generation American. My father is from Thailand, and my mother is from the Philippines of Chinese descent. I wrote a piece for Leo Iguchi called The Wandering, and I called it that because I felt it was a fairly apt title for my own experiences searching for this nebulous American identity, which I'm not sure I have actually figured out yet, but I also don't really care anymore, which is maybe a, another conversation. Uh, the piece itself, I think, reflects my own artistic voice, which is this sort of combination of my experiences growing up in the hardcore and metal sort of extreme music subculture and studying the violin pretty intently uh, via Western classical music. I'm pretty excited for Leo's unaccompanied project. I think it's a great thing that he's got all these different composers with wildly varying experiences, but all of us Americans. And I think that hopefully it shows that diversity and shows how wide that sort of grasp at an identity is. I don't really have uh, any opinion in terms of where I think the national conversation should go, and I don't even really know if that's an appropriate question because I think that experience is so unique to the individual, or that claim as an identity as an American is so unique to the individual, and you can't put one finger on it. And for me to want the national conversation to go some places, sort of not, I think it's a non starter. Mm -hmm.
My name is Craig Gostin. I'm a composer, and I was born and raised in Damascus, Syria. I moved here with my family when I was about 13. Uh, it was a difficult transition uh, to leave that beautiful culture um, and come here to a place that I didn't always feel welcome. One of my fond 
fondest memories um, growing up in Syria was visiting the 6th century monastery uh, in the town of Sebnaya, which is about 20 miles north of Damascus. I always found it to be a place that was deeply peaceful, but also very mysterious, especially the chapel, which was built entirely of stone, and always cooler than the outside world. During the pandemic lockdown, I began listening to field recordings of Syrian Orthodox church hymns that were made in that monastery and other churches around that area. I found them to be very grounding and common. With breviary, the solo cello piece that I wrote for our friend, cellist Leo Iguchi, I hope to impart what I felt during those visits to Sidnaya so long ago. Thank you for listening, and I hope that you enjoy it.
I'm James Diaz, a Colombian composer based in Philadelphia. My wife and I moved to New York in 2016, and of course, it wasn't part of our plan to live in such a particularly political time, especially considering that we were the first members of our family to live in the States. So our time here has been like an ocean of contradictory and beautiful experiences. My piece is called This Is Not America Part 2, which is a reference to two different but somehow related pieces of art. One is a billboard logo by Chilean artist Alfredo Jar, and the second one is a video by Puerto Rican rapper Presidente. This piece is a mine talk about the meaning of America, which is indeed a single continent without real territorial subdivisions. The United States is not America because America is a continent, no a nation. Of course, the state is part of America as the name intended, but not the entire entity. The ownership of the term is that the reformer encounters two paths. The performer is asked to choose between two different but somehow related sonic ideas. For every new phrase, the performer is asked again to choose. But at the same time, the performer is also asked to introduce or insert another contrasting musical idea as a sort of interruption to the main text. This framework tries to present not only a sense of multiplicity and coexistence, but also a notion of contradiction. Because as listeners, we won't be able to know the other possible paths. It's throughout the lens of the performer that we will create a shape or a form of meaning of the work. So I will leave the temple to Leo for developing the accompanying project, for including and supporting our work. I do hope this project opens the conversation in a significant way. Thank you.
everyone, my name is Shapan Lu, and I am so thrilled to be a part of the unaccompanied um, project here that Yale has uh, birthed into the world. Um, it's been a regenerative writing process for me um, to think about this question that we pose to the composers of what does your Americanness sound like? Um, as I pondered that question through many different pathways and perspectives, um, the piece that came to be really coalesced uh, around the spring of 2022 this year, um, which was a really dark time in some ways for, um, for our country, and um, I was really grieving and feeling a lot of anger about um, a series of mass shootings that happened so close together, um, including the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas, and um, a shooting in Buffalo, New York, in a supermarket where um, several black Americans were killed. And um, the kind of impotent rage that that brought up for me um, and the grief that this is something that we have to accept as normal in this country. Um, that we have to somehow numb the, you know, appropriate human reaction to such atrocities. So that we have to numb our reactions in order to kind of go on with daily life um, was really upsetting for me. And so um, I wrote a reflection at the time that my Americanness sounds like uh, five parts rage, four parts grief, one part hope, and and infinity of effort. Um, those last two parts are, of course, very important, the hope that keeps us going and the, the effort that we make to try to um, change things for the better, both in our immediate personal lives and in community and broader society. Um, so that's kind of the genesis of this piece, Patchwork, for Leo, that um, is kind of about the many parts, the, the many patches, um, it's about the work of, of trying to bring that together or to transform some of that. Um, and uh, it's certainly about trying to keep that thread of hope alive for all of us so that we can keep um, doing our parts to make things better. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Kenji Bunch. I'm the composer of Ghost Mine for Leo Iguchi for solo cello. Uh, when Leo asked me to write this piece, I knew I wanted to base it on history from uh, where I'm from, Oregon. I'm uh, born and raised here in Portland, Oregon, where I live now. Uh, Ghost Mine is about an incident that occurred in eastern Oregon in 1887. There was a group of Chinese miners, they were uh, looking for gold in the Willowa Hills, and they were ambushed one night by six local residents of Willowa County, uh, brutally murdered, and their bodies were dumped in the Snake River, only to be discovered downstream days later. Uh, the six men who committed this crime were never punished. Uh, three of them were charged, but they were able to uh, flee. And so no one was uh, ever held accountable. And actually the crime itself was largely forgotten until over a hundred years later in 1995, a clerk happened to stumble upon some records and did some investigating and uh, discovered the details of this incident. Uh, the place where it happened was called Deep Creek. And since this information has come to light, the name has been changed to Chinese Massacre Cove. And there's a memorial uh, to those uh, miners at the site. Uh, so I, I, I didn't know anything about this incident growing up. I only learned about it a couple years ago. And I, I like uh, the idea of uh, history being uh, preserved uh, through art, and I at times like to use my music to uh, try to do that. Uh, what I didn't want to do was um, relive uh, the trauma of a, a very uh, traumatic event. <laughs> Rather, I, I'm interested in healing, and um, I, I wrote the piece with the intention of a kind of transgenerational healing. Um, and so it's, it's kind of a meditation uh, that begins with very quiet atmospheric sounds and then it uh, kind of develops into something with more vitality as if to breathe life back into uh, those uh, whose lives are taken away from them in such a tragic way. Uh, so ultimately it's, it's a, a life-affirming um, almost joyful piece, and uh, it, it's meant to to heal the land itself and the, the people um, involved in that incident. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm uh, so grateful to Leo for this project, and uh, thank you for listening.
for coming, and I hope you have a chance to stay and we can talk a little bit about the stories you heard and um, any thoughts you might like to share on the project. I, I'd love to chat. Uh, this whole project is about conversation, so I would love to uh, hear your thoughts. Thank you again for coming. Thank you again to Barrows uh, and to Tom Devo, and uh, I hope you'll all keep the conversation going. So, thank you. Five more shirts for sale. I've had for way too long. If you want to buy a shirt, I don't have to keep it in my apartment. Please do that. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, you can make a donation, cash, uh, Apple Pay, Venmo, PayPal, all those kinds of things. But come and say hi. Thanks for coming up.